Here are some fantastic AI news that you shouldn't miss. Tesla is introducing their second generation of the Optimus AI controlled robot. And that of course is pretty amazing. You can see here, it looks like a human. It has hands with fingers that it can individually control. It can walk around and be human-like in its movement. It can do also more complex movements for better balance in there. So this is a really good look into the future of where we interact and actually be surrounded by robots that help us in our everyday life. Another cool thing here is also that this robot not just has fingers that it can individually control, but on top of that, these fingertips have sensors on them so that the robot knows how strong it is touching an object and where it is touching an object. And see here, handling an egg without breaking it. So that is pretty amazing stuff. OpenAI is launching a $10 million grant into the research of alignment and safety of superhuman AI. Now, this is really interesting because their assumption is that within the next 10 years, we might see AI that has superhuman intelligence. Now, this means that the AI can create outputs that are so creative and so complex that we can no longer understand or fully comprehend what the AI is really doing. Even today, AI is so complex that we often see it as a black box where we don't really know how it arrives at these results. So in the future, the AI, for example, can create very complex computer code that's one million lines long and we're not being able to test it if it might be dangerous to run this kind of code. So one of the concepts here would be to create other AIs that be able to test the output of these superhuman AIs to give us feedback if this output is safe to run. Runway is starting a new research project and they call it General World Models. Now their concept is, instead of training an AI just on language or training an AI just on images, they want to use a lot of different media formats, a lot of different information, also video, also audio. And this is not just to be able to create different media formats. The main idea here is that the AI has an understanding of the full environment. Now, imagine for example here, a language model. It can create a story for you based on the prediction of what is happening next in the text. But you can't do the same thing at the moment with video. And that's a problem because in a video, you have a lot of very complex connections, interactions, causalities between the different actors, objects, and the environment. So when you want to create a movie based on the AI input, the AI needs to be able to understand all of this complexity and the environment. It basically needs to be able to simulate the actions inside of an environment. And that is the idea here. Really interesting concept. I can't wait to see where this research is leading. Resemblance AI is releasing an open source model to enhance audio. And they have a very interesting video here. Let's listen to that for a bit. Furthermore, the man who computed the consequences, even, even may have been the same one that made the guesses, may have made some mistake in the analysis. Those are obvious remarks. So when I say if it disagrees with the experiment, it's wrong, I mean after the experiment has been checked, the calculations have been checked, the things that love. I have to say that the result is pretty impressive, even though in this example, I have to say that the sound of the voice is pretty different from the original sound. So it's kind of removing also a little bit the characteristic of that person. But nonetheless, the result is very impressive because you can now understand the text a lot clearer. So that is really good. Now this is on a GitHub page. And when you scroll down here, it gives you here some forms of installation on how you can actually run this on your own computer. So this is pretty cool. But they also have a web demo they can use by clicking on this link. This web demo is running on Hugging Face. As you can see here, you can drop an audio file in here and then just test the result. Over here, you have the output that is denoised and then you also have an output that is enhanced. 
Google has released their Imagine 2 text to image AI and they're showing some really interesting new abilities. They say on their website that you can use Imagine 2 now as developers, but also as Google Cloud customers via their Imagine API in the Google Cloud Vertex AI. They provide a link here where you can access that. When we look at the different new abilities that this AI has, one of them is the image caption understanding, which means that the AI is trained on more and longer captions so that it understands better what you are writing in your prompt, but also has a wider range of understanding different topics that you are talking about in your prompt. Something that is even more interesting here is the realism of the image generation. Now, this has not just to do with photorealistic images, but much more than that, this is about correct creation of faces with AI and also creating correct hands and finger positions. Here you can see some examples where a hand is holding chopsticks. That's a fairly complex position of a hand. And then also two hands conducting music with beautiful and interesting finger poses. Another thing that this will solve is that there should be less problems and artifacts in the image generation itself. Also, they have here something they call fluid style conditioning. Now, what this is, is that you can use input images similar to how the IP adapter works and then combine them with the text prompt to create new designs and images in a similar style. And another thing they're adding here is advanced in painting and out painting. They show some very nice results here on how this can work and also how complex these results can be. Here we have a crazy news. An AI made from living human brain cells can perform speech recognition. So it can recognize the voice of a person out of hundreds of other voices. That is pretty crazy. Stability AI is introducing memberships. And what this mainly does is giving you the ability to use the output of the stable diffusion models commercially. As you can see here, they have three different tiers of their membership. The first one is non-commercial and free, but it also means that you can use the output, the generated images only for personal use, not for commercial use. The second one is the professional tier. This applies to most of you because it's for companies and startups with an annual revenue of under $1 million. And this costs $20 per month and you can use the images for commercial purposes. And then of course, there's the enterprise version that also allows you commercial use of the output. Of course, you have to keep in mind that this only applies to the stability AI models not to all of the other community trained models out there, because in that case, of course, Stability AI doesn't really have control over what kind of images or input has been used to create these models. The Council of the European Union is working on its first rules on how AI can be used inside of the EU. Now, this has a lot to do with the different risks that AI is posing, but also the different ways that AI can be used. For example, high-risk AIs have to give a lot more transparency about how they pose risks, but also who was involved in training these AIs. Even for low-risk AIs, there has to be a marking that identifies the output as AI-generated output so that the consumers have an understanding and can make their own decision based on really knowing this is not the real thing, this is AI-generated. On top of that, they have a lot of rules around how AI can be used. So for example, it is outruled as unsafe to use AI for things like tracking the emotional states of workers at the workplace, but also for collecting information from image AI identification about, for example, the sexual orientation or the religious beliefs of people. Another thing that is outruled here is the behavioral manipulation. This, for example, would include things like using AI content to spread false information to create political manipulation and so on. So AI cannot be used to impact how you think about things and manipulate you. Also, there's a lot of rules 
about how AI can be used for policing. So for example, no social scoring, but also no predictive policing of individuals. So no minority reports kind of predictive pre-crime thing can be happening here. So all in all, there's a lot of very interesting stuff in here. And they also want to have a panel of scientific experts so that we have a better understanding of what AI can do and define regulations based on this expert knowledge. Let me know in the comments what your favorite news was or if I even missed any AI news. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.